Hey guys, what's up? I hope you're well. Uh, in this one, we're gonna take a look at environment configuration within Laravel. I wanna spend some time with this one because I think it gets overlooked and you need to know how to configure your environment inside of your Laravel project to kind of get a handle on where your configuration options are and why the ENVs are set up the way they are. So let's start by just, I'm gonna unhide my Explorer because I normally work like this, but we're going to do this so you guys can see this. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the .env example file. When you pull a project in from a repository, you may have just a .env.example file, depending on how it's set up. You might definitely probably not have this file here. And what that is, is just these are your options for how your project is configured. So whether your database is set up, your app name, a bunch of various things, Redis, uh, mail. And what you want here is you want to run php artisan key generate if you don't have a key and that will help you get the key set up for your project any database credentials and get you guys going usually when you create a fresh project this is already done for you what i did over here was i decided to separate each area out into specific like sections so that you guys can see how these things uh, work and how they correlate to the specific config file or folder over here Okay, so we're gonna go through this fairly quickly and uh, most of the examples are kind of the same. There's a lot of repetition here, but you'll get the idea when I start going. So first off, if you wanna create a name for your application that is more than one word, right now, I believe my project is called Fundamentals, but you might wanna add some more stuff like to your project. And you do this by wrapping your environment variable name in double quotes, okay? Uh, right now, this is set to environment being local and the app debug is set to true uh, this is normal if you're in production mode and you say the app is set to production uh, you don't want this to be true you want this one to be false okay because you don't want any sensitive information to be displayed uh, to in the browser uh, containing any errors or things relating to your project inside of whatever you're testing if you do want this on for whatever reason maybe you're doing something you can do that. You shouldn't, but you, you can if you want to, okay? So we're gonna set this back to false and we're gonna set this back to local. Okay, next section, I just kind of uh, picked them. They're not in any particular order. I didn't follow like the scaffolding verbatim. So what I did here was like, say, let's look at the log settings. So right here we have the log settings that are kind of the same as the example.env file. So what's new here is there's a logs deprecation channel, and this is for logging any kind of method or thing in PHP or dependency or package that has been deprecated. It's no longer available. So you can log that, and this is what this environmental variable is for. If you want to see the configurations behind this, it's over here under logging. So under the logging config file, under the config folder, you'll see that you have various channels. The default is stack, and these are the credentials or the criteria that is required when you are using the stack channel. There is single, there's daily, there's Slack. So what I did was I went over here and I kind of showed you if you're using Slack, you're gonna need this environmental variable. If you're using paper drill, you're gonna need these things. If you're using another you know, service or you know, credentials to do logging, you're gonna have to apply the appropriate environmental variable which is usually a string based variable to go along with this. So this is where these values are coming from. So for logging, they're coming from here. You know, this is the log slack webhook URL for paper trail. They're coming from here. So depending on the service you're using, once again, you replicate that over here. Now you don't need all of these. So if you're not using any of these services and you're just using the default, then just remove them. I'm just going through the list to kind of show you where these are coming from, and maybe the ones that you don't know about that you could have access to that come with the project out of the gate. So down here, we have their database settings. We've seen this before. You can configure this, add your root password or whatever it is, or you know whatever credentials you need. There is a database URL one as well. Uh, this also comes from databases, so you can go through here. You don't have to use MySQL. There's SQLite. There's other services that you can use, and you can import those services or connections via your env file so if you're using another way to connect to a database then you put those credentials here uh, down here file system is set to local you can have ftp secure ftp or s3 so what i did was i just moved the amazon ones closer to this one because they kind of correlate so normally you have your let's see here they're all kind of just put right here like kind of stacked together and i think amazon is down here you don't have to group them like this once again i just want to give you guys just an idea 
here we have, you know, any credentials that you're going to need for an S3 bucket or an Amazon storage service, and you place those here. And these all come from the same correlating file, you know, file systems under the config area. So you have your options of config services or disks you want to use. This is an array of values and you can add more or another one if you have something else you want to use other than the ones that are given here by default. So I'm going to close these up right now. It's getting a little bit big. I'm going to jump to the env file, scroll down. Same with broadcast services. I won't go through them. Uh, Pusher was here because by default, Laravel uh, suggests Pusher as a service for broadcasting. Here it is. I just kind of moved it below here. You know, I just kind of pushed these services up here, no pun intended, to kind of just show you that these are all together. Next thing down the list is the cache driver file. We're going to talk about caching files a little bit later on in this video too. Um, that's an important topic that we want to touch on. But the same thing applies here, whether you're using database files, uh, memcache, redis, dynamodb, octane, whatever. This also corresponds to the cache file over here. I won't go into that. Down here, the queue things as well. So whether you're using queue redis or queue fail drivers as your default, which is here, that's also found underneath the queue settings over here under config. I'm not ar arbitrarily grabbing these values from like anywhere. Um, they are coming from what is recommended. If you're using the failed queue jobs, you're going to have to use something like this as the default. You can configure this to whatever your needs are and they get plugged into the environment file. You don't have to do this. You can leave them alone inside of their own config file, but you know, this is one place to kind of configure those things all together. Sessions, uh, same thing, uh, memcache host, Redis, the same idea. If you're using Redis, I think it's a little bit different here in Laravel 9. I haven't got around to kind of implementing this. Let's take a look at this app.php file. So this is another config file within the um, folder. And this is kind of your overall configurations for your applications. So here I have the defaults and I just changed that to fundamentals if I didn't provide a name. But let's just jump down to the Redis portion of this. So at one point in older versions of Laravel, I believe that like you've had to turn on the service provider. Let's see here if they did it. Yeah, there was some kind of alias that you had to have mentioned or turned on. Uh, while we're here, we might as well just touch on this. This is a little bit different than other versions of Laravel. They normally would have listed all of the facades here and their aliases corresponding in this long list, but they've kind of cleaned this up and they went to the default alias. This function uh, does the same thing. It just jumps inside of the illuminate support directory under Laravel under facades. And down here it lists what was before all of the aliases listed in that app.php file. I kind of like this a little better. It's a little bit cleaner, makes more sense. And within here, you can add or it, your, your aliases will get merged to the default aliases and they get placed with inside uh, this array here. So that's kind of interesting. So just to touch on that Redis thing, I think that was one of the issues that was slightly different from the other versions of Laravel. When I get around to doing Redis, maybe I'll touch on that as well and I'll try to clarify what I meant by that. But I think there was a Redis alias that came from, you know, Illuminate Facade Support and it was turned off by default. So you had to go in here and uncomment it to use Redis at one point. Uh, those of you from older versions of Laravel will probably know what I'm talking about. But if you're new, don't worry about it. That's okay, guys. What we'll do here is we'll go back to queues. We'll close this. We'll jump back to our .env. Down here, same thing with the mail. So all these settings are default. It's almost a duplication of the mail here inside of the .env.example. What I did was I showed you that you could add other services. So send mail, log, postmark, mailgun, whatever you choose, you can add those. And the corresponding config file, sorry, is set over here under the mails directory. So you could use mailers like SES, postmark, send mail, array, failover, whatever. You can use these all here and they're all configured here. So these values, once again, are coming from the config file. They are listed over here. One that most people probably don't know about is the Bicrip rounds. So this is under the hashing configuration. So let's not scroll through that because we're developers. We're just going to search for hashing.php. Uh, so this is the file in question and this is the environment variable that is set here. So uh, this will allow you to control the amount of time it takes to hash a given password. So for whatever reason, if you needed 
some kind of control around that, you can do so and you can plug it into your EMV file rather than digging through the actual config and change that if needed. If not, just leave it alone, should be good. All right, that pretty much is just what I wanted to show you. You don't have to set up your ENV file like this. It's just to kind of break down where these things are coming from and how these environments can be configured or these things can be configured inside of your project. Once again, I don't recommend um, uploading your .env file to a repository. These things have sensitive data and it's a security risk if you kind of push these things up. So most projects will have the .env example and any other environmental variable configuration that they want you to have, and they will just, you have to fill in the credentials there. Let's just close this. So one thing I did add here was um, you can configure things like your time zone. So I set mine to America, New York. By default, I think it's UTC. Depending on your project, you can change that. I added locales, so depending on what your project is, en underscore ca would be one of the locales I'd like to target when I publish a uh, you know, a localization thing. Uh, you can do EN underscore US or UK. So it depends. So let's say you're faking some data. You may want to use a different locale, like a faker locale. Obviously, the phone numbers and the data, like addresses and area codes and things are slightly different than they are in the US and Canada. So you would add this here and you would run your seeder and you'll be able to get those things to test the way you want for those particular regions. Uh, once again, we'll get into providers. I won't go into this here, but we'll touch on that a little later on. Um, so that is the app.php file. These are your config files. And depending what you bring into your project, you may vendor publish or publish other config files inside of here, you will have maybe additional configurations or environmental variables that you'll have to add to your list for them to work, you know, to get a token or connect. So keep that in mind. You really have to dig into here, guys. I know it's kind of a nested thing over on this side, but when you start to look at how things work in Laravel, you usually end up in the vendor directory under the framework and you start to see how things work underneath the hood. Okay, so how do you use these variables? How do you use them if you were inside of a blade file or a controller or something like that? Let's scroll down to the very bottom here. Let's say you're in local environment and you don't want this to show up in production. So you could go to your blade file and here, I'm gonna cheat a little bit because you could use uh, helpers like config and you know the env helper we're just going to wrap this whole thing around some blade syntax and we'll talk about blade and how to use that later on as well in upcoming lessons so we're going to use the env syntax and we're going to copy this or cut this and we're going to paste it inside here and inside this env we're going to set our environment to local over here we're going to go into our environment and we're going to set this to production. What you might assume is actually correct. If we go over to here and I refresh this, because we're in production, that bit of code, that snippet, we don't see anymore. So it's good to learn how to use these variables to your advantage and these configurations because there may be things you want to actually run functions or logic against to kind of figure out what you can do. I just kind of said, okay, well, I'm in local mode here and I don't want this to show up unless I'm in local. So if I'm in production, this shouldn't show up. If I switch this back and go down here and we'll refresh, there it is. Inside of the welcome blade.php, you can call helper functions, and this is just some more syntax, but we'll get into that later. You can use the config helper, and this allows you to access things like from the app like itself, and these are aliases, and you can access things like the app name. So this would be equivalent to accessing what's inside of this folder and the app name. You could use that against some logic, or you know, maybe you don't want to write out every single time in a component, the name of your app in the footer, you can do something like that. If you wanted to take the ENV option and use that helper. In this case, you can call the environment variables from the .env file. So the app underscore name, the URL, anything that we have published inside of your project. So notice that they're not all listed here, right? So you'd have to add those to their particular configurations in order for those to be visible, I believe. Things like that are available for you guys if you're using the environment configuration correctly. So Laravel has a set of commands that we're gonna get into and these are the artisan commands. 
So when we type in PHP artisan, this will give us a list of commands that we're gonna work with uh, fairly consistently and on a regular basis that you guys will get familiar with. These are the commands that allow us to do certain things and create certain pieces of scaffolding and functionality inside of Laravel. So one of them we're gonna use is PHP artisan down. And when you type this and you hit enter, our project right now is currently up, it's running. So when we say down, we go into maintenance mode. So now the application is in maintenance mode. And we refresh this and we get a 503, so some type of server error. This is a 500 series error and our project is down. So that's not good. What you can do is, let's say you have a situation where the application that you're working on or the thing you're working on is actually down, but you wanna be able to go and see that. The rest of the world is seeing it as down, but you and your team or whoever, yourself, you wanna go and see this application as if it were up. The option that you can do is, um, I believe you can create what's called a secret key or a hash. So I'm just gonna kind of steal this from the documentation, but let's say you wanted you know, to be in maintenance mode and still bypass some of this stuff. So you would say, repeat that command, it will say PHP artisan down, and we'll throw in this flag here, dash that secret. So this hash you can generate however you see fit, maybe using um, you know, the hashing or, or some other way to do this. And you can run this and it says the application's already down. So that's okay, let's just go back up. Let's go PHP artisan up. So the application is live, we're gonna refresh. Okay, so it's up. We're gonna run this command again and we're gonna make it down. And so now it's in maintenance mode. So you can't really tell this right now, I'm gonna create a new incognito window inside of Safari here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in the URL to my project and I'm also going to use this hash at the very end. Let's go back and access that one more time. That's the name of my project. And I'm gonna add the string at the very end of this. The application is down and it is down because if we refresh over here, we get the service 503 unavailable. But over here in this private window, it is down, but we are able to see this. So your application can be down, you can bypass maintenance mode, and you can see what's going on or any errors or, or, or things like that. So that's kind of a neat uh, thing to do by bypassing maintenance mode. So um, if you have applications that can't be down, like zero downtime, there are services and things that you can use to help you, you know, do that transition on deployment or whatever you're using. This is kind of nice. It allows you to kind of experience what it's like to have your application down, but still have it available for you to do some work or debugging or figuring something out. So you could do the same thing and you can set a refresh time and then set the time, like, you know, maybe every 60 seconds or whatever. I'm not going to run this, but you know, you get the idea. So let's bring our application back up. So PHP Artisan up, the incognito one or the private one is technically still up as well, so we'll clear that. We have a thing that's called caching. So it's a config cache. So it's it deals with uh, this file here and your caching options. You would typically run this command as part of your production uh, process. So it would give your application a little bit of a speed boost and it would actually you know, make your application perform a little bit faster. But if you run this in local, um, it will cache all of the things inside of your application, which makes it hard for you to see what's going on as you're updating things. So just keep in mind that this option should not be ran during a local development because you will probably want to frequently see changes during the course of your application development. So only run, uh, PHP Artisan config cache uh, when you're close to production or you want to optimize some performance inside of your project. So um, that's it for environment configuration, guys. I know we went over a lot and I wanted to really kind of focus on some of this because it gets overlooked, but you'll find that you'll be reaching for this from time to time. And you have to understand how these work in order to, you know, pull in new services or configure new things. And uh, it will really help you get familiar with Laravel and how the configuration options work and how the ENV options work and how that you can create multiple .env files depending on your situation, whether you're testing or you have a specific set of 
you know, for local or dev or, or whatever. But with that said, thanks for watching guys. I will see you guys in the next one. If you liked the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, leave your comments below. Take care and I'll catch you later.